I want to just maybe go back and talk a little bit about what we know and maybe don't know about the relationship between nutrition and obesity. Sure. Which sounds like it should be obvious. So um, tell us what you think is actually known about the relationship between food and body composition. So I like the way you phrase the question and using the word body, the phrase body composition, as opposed to just obesity or weight. There are obviously three different things. Obesity implies a threshold, you're too much. Uh, there's a judgment about uh, the quantity or the, the effects of the excess. Um, then there's body composition, the tissue, how much is fat, how much is lean, where is the fat lean, what is the fat composed of, what is the lean composed of. And then there's just weight, which is just, you know, your, your mass on this planet. And those three things are highly related, but not identical. What we know indisputably, and even people who sort of rail against something they call the energy balance model, which you and I have discussed, is whether it's really a model is unclear. It's really more of a constraint. Um, it's really a restatement of the first law of thermodynamics, which is the law of conservation that matter and energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but only converted. It is a constraint by which all other descriptions of what happens with weight and mass and food intake and energy intake and energy expenditure must operate. It's not a description or an explanation of what happens. It just says, if you prescribe, uh, if you describe any proposed explanation of what happens, it's got to follow that first law of thermodynamics in order to make sense. And that first law of thermodynamics in, in the field of nutrition obesity often gets stated as something like changes in energy storage equal changes in energy intake minus changes in energy output or delta energy stores equals delta energy in minus delta energy out. Food intake can affect those things. Alternatively, you could say that energy intake is one of those things. So it's, it gets back to that descriptive thing. Now, one of the questions becomes, how does all the other aspects of food besides the mere energy content of it affect the amount of weight one gains or loses, the body composition, the tissues, where, they're just, where the mass is distributed, what types of tissues it's in, composition of those tissues. And then of course, whether or not one exceeds some threshold. There's every reason to believe that many, many aspects of food from the marketing and pricing of it, which then can influence the intake of it and other things as well, to the taste, the smell, the timing, uh, what you eat it with, what it's combined with, phytochemicals in it, micronutrients, macronutrients, all can affect energy expenditure subsequent energy intake um, or nutrient partitioning, which is what we, a fancy phrase for where you stick the energy that you store in the body. Do you stick it into fat or muscle or bone or visceral fat or subcutaneous fat, et cetera? So all those things can come into play. Now, what do we really know? The truth is, I think what we know is modest and partly that's because it seems to me to be very specific. That is, we can do a study and even when it's honestly done and well done and honestly reported, and we find that in this species, with this delivery of this composition in this way, this thing happens. And then when you look in a different species or a slightly different food, you get different results. So there's many, many studies saying, well, we got this with P protein and casein, but not whey, or we got it with whey, but not casein, or uh, we got it when we fed it two hours before the test meal, but not one hour before, or we got it in men, but not in women. And this makes me think we're talking often about subtle effects that may not be that clinically reliable and meaningful. And so the really big effect seems to be how many calories do you eat? But all these other aspects of food may then influence how many calories you eat either of that food or in subsequent occasions. And those can seem to have big, big effects, but we're still sort of, I think, trying to suss those out. Mm -hmm.
Thank you.